Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus gave this call to the whole earth. I mean, he meant for it to play out on the streets of Calcutta. It, it was his, his intention that, that across the, the mountains of South America, that, that in, in cities like Chicago and New York and Los Angeles, that, uh, that across the vast horizons of, of, of Russia, and even to the over one billion people that live in China, Jesus was issuing a call. And what he was offering to them was, is come be a part of me and I will nourish you and I will take care of you and I will feed you. I will sustain you. I will be life to you. Some people accepted that call. Some people don't. Some people ignore the call. and Some people don't really even know that there is a call. And a lot of us have, have seen people that have rejected the call. What I want to share with you today is the stories of, of six people that accepted the call of Jesus to be a branch connected to Him, the vine, and, uh, and they did that and remained faithful to that through the end of their life. Some of the people you're going to know, some of the people you're not going to know. It's okay. It, the point is their faith and what it took for them to stay attached to the vine and how you can use that in, in, in your life. What the story really is, this is the story of branches that attach themselves to the vine that is Jesus Christ. Although Jim only lived to be 58, his faith was the result of many years of being a true and honest seeker. He desired to really live for Christ and to glorify God. He came to believe that his faith journey was exactly that, a journey that would carry him into heaven. He valued and loved listening to the faith stories of other Christians. He loved coming together with other believers in Christ to enjoy times of praise, prayer, fellowship, and sharing Jesus with each other. He often spoke to me of how he had come to value not just head knowledge, but also heart knowledge, which comes from really experiencing God. He studied God's Word with the big picture in mind and saw it through the relationship of Christ's love for us. He talked with me about realizing that Jesus was right here with you, beside you right now, he liked the idea of putting in a good word for Jesus and reminding us to focus on Jesus. We went through many tough times of job losses, serious illnesses, and the loss of loved ones. These times stretched his faith, but his faith grew stronger and more real. These times drew him even closer to Jesus. In speaking of challenging events in your life, he said, these are the times to see the reality of the spiritual kingdom more clearly. It has more eternal answers. It's the time to recognize blessings in the middle of chaos, confusion, and even bad news. He liked the scriptures, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. When the diagnosis of stage four cancer came, Jim and I were blessed in that he had come to a sure and confident place in his journey with God. Although he wanted so much to live and be well, he told us that even if he wasn't healed physically, it would still be okay, because he would continue on his journey with God and would get to experience the reality of the joy of heaven.
not sure how many of you have read the plaque on the right side of the wall as you enter the foyer of this building. It reads, The stained glass cross hanging in the tower is in memory of faithful servant Tommy O'Dell. Tommy was a truly faithful servant and he kept himself attached to the vine until the day he died. He became a Christian at the age of 36 and had never known the love of God or of having a church family before. He was taught by a wonderful Christian man who mentored him and modeled the Christian life before him. Tommy was very diligent in searching the scriptures for himself to find the truth. He knew his brother loved the Lord and that that was good enough for him. When he obeyed the gospel and was baptized, it was like a light bulb was turned on inside him and he made a change in his life that was obvious to all who knew him. He didn't act one way on Sunday and another during the week. He was a Christian every day of the week. He loved going to church, attending lectureships, driving the joy bus, working in vacation Bible schools, and playing a puppet in Bible hour. He was not concerned with getting praise for what he did. He loved doing the mundane tasks that no one ever knew he did. He never tired of doing anything that he could to help others. He took the verses seriously that talked about taking care of the orphans and widows, visiting the sick, and helping the needy. He had high positions of authority in his daily job and in the National Guard, but you would not know it to talk to him. He was just as ordin an ordinary guy providing for his family and working for the Lord. He encountered many bumps in the road on his Christian journey, and the Lord always gave him strength to overcome them. He surrounded himself with close Christian brothers and sisters who gave him encouragement and lifted him in prayer when the going got tough. He was not ashamed to ask for prayers when the struggles of life sometimes seemed too overwhelming. When his health started to fail him, he went right on working, doing everything he could possibly do in spite of the circumstances. As the deacon of buildings and grounds at the old building, Steve asked him to put up a basketball goal on the grounds of our old building on Bar Road. When Tommy finished it, he got a stick and etched in the concrete, Heaven is my goal. That summed it up for Tommy because everything he did in life was in anticipation of going to heaven. He knew this world was not his home. He was just passing through. After suffering two heart attacks within 20 days, he died at the age of 56, and he was as committed to the Lord on the day he died as he was the day he came up out of the water 20 years earlier.